Now, when I built my hydraulic press a few years ago, I really thought that was going to be a game changer here in the shop. Turns out I don't really use it as much as I thought I would. And a lot of you ask, why did I choose to use the power hammer in a particular video versus using the hydraulic press that would do a very similar task? So today I thought I'd try to explain that and also talk to you about an upgrade that I hope is going to make the hydraulic press a little bit more user-friendly in my shop. I've had a power hammer of one form or another in the shop for well over 20 years. I started off with a 50 pound little giant. Then I acquired the bowl air hammer that needed an air compressor to supply that hammer. Then we got the 25 pound little giant, which technically is Janet's power hammer. And that was on her side of the shop when we had two separate work areas in the shop. For a while, I had a little carry hard power hammer. It was a cute little hammer, but I didn't really use it. Then I upgraded to the 60 kilo Samac, which is really kind of my dream power hammer. I still have the 25 pound Little Giant. I use it fairly often, and there are some tasks that it is the perfect hammer for. But most of the time, this is what I use. So when I added a hydraulic press, it was an additional tool. It was gonna be kind of specialized, primarily for punching holes when I was making axes and adzes, things like that. So the power hammer is the old familiar tool. It's the one that I'm really used to. And as a blacksmith, I think in terms of hammer and anvil, much more than I do squishy squishy. But that doesn't mean a press isn't a good tool for forging. There are a lot of things that a press is superior for and a lot of reasons why I would like to get more use out of the press I have. So why don't I use that press more? So other than simply not being the first tool that comes to mind when I need to accomplish a task, there's some other things about my home-built press that make it a little bit less ideal than some of the others. In general, I find that press is ideal for big forgings that need a lot of movement fast. The power hammer then is something that is more nimble. You can change faster. You can rotate stock 90 degrees between every blow and keep things under control and react to changes much faster than you can under a press. But if you just need to move a lot of material in one direction really quick, a press is still the ideal way to go. And I do use this a lot more off of the videos than what you see in the videos. Now, one of the deficiencies in what I built, really not a deal breaker by any means, is the fact that this is a fairly slow press. So if you're running a full speed electric motor, something like 3600 RPMs, depends on the motor, you get the full rated output of the hydraulic pump. But it also requires a bigger motor to pump it that fast. So this press would have required a five horse motor to run the pump at full speed. Now that requires a little bit bigger wiring and unfortunately I don't have the room underneath the press where I wanted to put everything for the larger five horse motor. So I went with a two horse motor, runs at half speed, that runs the press half as fast, still develops a full 24 tons of pressure, but the motor fits under there, the motor costs less, and doesn't require as large an electrical circuit to run the two horse motor as it would have the five horse motor but that means the press is kind of slow. On a positive side, that means you've got plenty of reaction time. If you're looking and you're trying to align the punch up to punch an eye, you're gonna be able to see if it's lined up much easier than if the press comes straight down and starts punching that eye before you're ready for it. Between being less expensive, easier to build the press I wanted, and giving me that extra time, that was a very intentional decision on my part. That wasn't a mistake. However, hindsight being 2020, if I were to build the press again, I would probably redesign it so I could fit the five horse motor and spend the extra money on the five horse motor and make it run a little bit faster. So one of the big things that makes this press less convenient to work with than I would like it to be is the system of die holders that I used. I thought this was gonna be really slick. They're just flat plates and they slide into a little angle iron bracket and then have a little tab that holds it in so it can't slide out really seems to be a good idea. Problem is they never are perfectly tight and for drawing dies, flat dies, things like that, that really doesn't matter. It works fine that way. But for punches, when they don't stay aligned all the time, things tend to shift and rock, it starts to be a problem. It starts making it harder to get an accurate punch, which was the main thing I wanted to use this for. They also tend to jam in there sometimes and you have to take a hammer and tap them out from the back. Not a big deal, but makes it inconvenient. And there's certainly no quick change in the dies. So the die system has been a bit of a problem and the punches that I've made never really work quite right because they lack the absolute precision that a machine made punch would have. A machinist making a punch does a much better job than a blacksmith punch. Not a big deal if you're using it by hand, you can adapt to the differences, 
But in a machine like this, that punch has to come straight down, and if it's off even a little bit, it's going to screw things up. So what have I got in mind to deal with some of the problems with this press? Well, the first thing, I've just got to change my mindset and think of the press more often. But to deal with the die issue and get dies that are much more precise, fit better, and even have the option of buying ready-made dies that are way better than the dies I make, I'm going to convert my die system to a die system from Coal Ironworks. And this is a stripper plate for punching. The punch comes through the top, and this is what pulls the material back off so it doesn't get stuck to the punch. So I went to Coal Ironworks' website. I ordered their punch system. This is the one they've got made to fit a 16-ton press. It's going to fit this as well as anything. Structurally, they're all the same. It's just the base plate size. You can get a little bit bigger die in their 24-ton press set. But since this fits my press, I don't really need the bigger dies. Black Bear Forge is sponsored by Combat Abrasives. Use the link in the video description and the coupon code BLACKBEAR10 for discount on your next order. In use, there's a 5 8 11 set screw that goes in this little recess right here on the side of the die. So I have to drill and tap a hole in this standoff that I'm making. Unfortunately, because I'm trying to keep this as short as possible so I don't lose any depth in my press, this standoff isn't deep enough. I still have to cut a notch out of the original die plate on that die holder for this to drop all the way in. That means my hole is going to intersect that original plate just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and drill a quarter inch hole in here just kind of as a pilot hole. And that way I'll know where to drill and everything should line up. I'm going to have to save the final drilling and tapping until after everything's assembled. Now to make sure there's just a little bit of clearance on this so these dies will come in and out easily, I'm going to wrap it with a piece of paper, a little bit of tape to hold it in place, and then I'll weld up around that. The paper will come out later and that should be just enough clearance. If not, we're going to have to resort to a file. Now my new die plates fit in the standoff just fine, except that there's a half inch sticking out the bottom here. But I knew that was going to happen. My old die plates are half inch thick. So if I line this up and transfer this slot, I'm going to have to cut a slot into there so this fits on that. I'm not looking to make a real precision slot here. It just needs to be big enough for that tenon to pass all the way through. So I'm going to drill the corners out a little oversized, drill out a couple of one inch holes in between, and hopefully it won't be too hard to clean it up at that point. So that fits nice and loosely the way I'd want it to fit. And if we put the standoff or spacer in there, 
that all fits just fine and gives me just a little room for adjustment and final alignment there. And underneath, it does not protrude. It's about a sixteenth of an inch shy of coming all the way through. So I'm not going to have to worry about that tenon hitting the press before it's set up tight against the die holder. But before I can weld this, I have to address one other issue. Now I've got a set screw that has to go in here. And either the tap drill or the threads, probably both, are going to have to just barely intersect the plate on the original die holders. And those don't quite line up with each other. There's about a half inch off here. So I'm going to have to cut a little recess in the part that sticks out. I think just cutting a curve with the die grinder is going to be fine. Then when I drill through the hole that I previously drilled in this spacer, everything should line up. I have the top die all welded up and it's reinstalled on the press. Now I want to install the bottom die holder and put this spacer block and the new die plates in there. I've cleaned all the old grease and crud off of here and put some die cam on the die holder. And then once I've got everything exactly where I want it, I'll scribe around this, take it to the welding bench, and I should be able to get it to line back up again. Okay, that lines up pretty good. You just have to trust that the sides line up pretty well also. Not much I can do there. Well, sometimes it's the simple things that bring a project to a screeching halt. In this case, it's a lack of a proper sized drill bit, 1730 seconds, to drill the tap hole for that 5 8 inch set screw. But thanks to the internet, a couple of days later, I've got just what I need, and I think we can finish this project up this afternoon. That is so much more solid. Now, after watching some videos that Coal Ironworks has up on their website, there are a few recommendations they make regarding punching with a hydraulic press. And the number one thing seems to be punch lube. They sell a couple of different varieties. I'm sure any of the commercial varieties would work. They've even done some experiments with just straight graphite and things like that. But the big thing is to cool and lubricate the punch after every pass. So if you're punching a hammer eye and you go two thirds of the way or three quarters of the way through from one side, retract the punch, cool it, lubricate it, flip the piece over, then finish the punch from the other side. You could still do it in one heat. That doesn't take that long. The key is to make sure you get that lube on there so the punch doesn't get stuck. And I think that's one of the places I've really gone wrong in the past with some of my homemade punches. Now their punch has a little spur on the end of it. And they say that it really helps if before you ever punch a hole, you run that punch down and put a little dimple in the bottom plate of this system. That will transfer to the workpiece, and when you flip it over to punch from the backside, there'll be a little spur sticking up out of that piece, and you'll be able to see that and line your punch up so you make sure you're punching in the exact right spot.
Well, I think that's the improvement I've been looking for in my hydraulic press. Now, I did notice that I, I've already caused just a little bit of damage to the end of that punch. It's H13. It is okay if it gets a little hot, but it may have gotten hotter than it should have, so probably I should have gone through maybe a fourth of the way, pulled the punch, cooled it, gone back in. So on my press, because it's slower and the punch is in contact with the material for a little bit longer time, probably it's gonna take a little bit longer. Trying to do this in two pushes might be a little bit aggressive, especially in something this big. Smaller piece of material or in something a little bit less resistant might not be so bad. So if I were punching mild steel for ornamental work, probably wouldn't be a problem. But 4140 is pretty tough to punch anyways. Still, I am super impressed. And this is all the slug that we took out of there. So we lost very little material. And what I end up with is something that'll make a nice hammer. So while I paid full price for this, Coal Ironworks didn't provide any of it. They aren't sponsoring me. I'm not even sure if they realize I'm gonna make a video about this stuff. Nevertheless, I wanna thank Coal Ironworks for designing this system. I think it is far superior than what I have used in the past, and I think I'm really gonna like this better. And I think my dies are gonna behave better. So hopefully we'll be seeing the hydraulic press in more upcoming videos. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.